Yeah. Why don't we why don't we jump into um we'll go to, you want to go to France first or the first team on the list? I would love to go to France. I don't want to. France the, the French are in. You've never even been to France. How could you say and that? I've heard I've heard that Parisian French people are stuck up. That's what I've heard. You're you're going off of rumors and stereotypes, and that's that's not acceptable. I'm going off of that one kid from college who studied abroad for four months and thought it changed their life. That would be you if Alfred was worldwide. <laughs> Alfred is worldwide. Don't don't sleep on this. <laughs> um anyway, so the former World Cup champions enter the tournament as the fourth ranked team in the world. In their 16th finals appearance, they're looking to be the third team in history to go back to back. Uh, can you tell me the other two? I feel like Brazil would be a safe guess. Okay. And I don't think it's Spain. Could be could be like a Germany. Maybe Port no, not Portugal. I don't think so. I feel like it, Brazil, I feel Pretty confident in guessing Brazil. And then the second one, oh, it's tough. I don't think it's Spain because I think 2010 was like one of their first or something. I, I'll just guess. I'll, I'll guess France. Why not? It's not France. It is Italy in 1934 uh, and 38. How could you not? Brazil was correct. Brazil. Yeah, I figured 50, Brazil would be correct. 58 and 62. <clears throat> they beat Sweden and Czechoslovakia, where Italy beat Czechoslovakia and Hungary. Oh, how the turns table. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so they won Group D of their qualifying in UEFA against powerhouses like Kazakhstan, Finland, Bosnia, uh, and Ukraine. Uh, led by Didi Deschamps, they will look to take this team to greatness yet again after a relatively disappointing Euro 2020 where they lost uh, in pens to Switzerland in the per, in the group ground of 16 and a really poor Nations League group where they barely survived relegation. Um, they will be without some key players due to injury. However, uh, they will be bringing back the majority of that 2018 World Cup roster. Have they? What's their form looking like? They looking okay? Well, considering it's all Nations League games, um, form's not going to look the best. They had a 1-1 draw against 12th-ranked Croatia, followed by a 1-1 draw against 34th-ranked 34th Austria, uh, a 1-0 loss against Croatia, a 2-0 win against Austria, and then a 2-0 loss most recently against 10th-ranked Den uh, Denmark. Yeah, definitely not a great look going in. Um, goal scorers Mbappe, twice, Rabio, Benzema, and Giroud. So, um, yeah, they've got they've got some some worries. I think um, mainly injury worries. Conte and Pogba, the the center mid duo that ran the show for them in 2018, both out confirmed out with injury. Uh, which means that some key players are going to have to step up. Uh, the first one I have on my key players list is Kylian Mbappé. Why? Is why do you right? do this every time when it's like someone that's <laughs> obvious? It's just let me let me try to butcher their name as much as possible. Uh, because we're a professional podcast. That's what we do. It's part of our thing. Um, Kylian Mbappé, obviously uh, one of the most dynamic players in the world. Um. His ability was on show at 2018 World Cup, and it hasn't gotten any less impressive. Um, Eight-time top scorer in competitions he's been in, four-time player of the season, one-time player of the year, five-time French champion, one-time World Cup champion, of course, um, along with a whole bunch of other things he's done for PSG. We know about his ability. We know that he has done it on the biggest stage ever. Um, he's rapid quick. He's got fantastic scoring ability. Defenders need to watch him. He's got 189 goals in 235 games for PSG, uh, 28 goals in 58 games for France. So, yeah, this guy is obviously going to be one to watch. Try to pick a more obvious one next time. Alex Mouille. He's not French. You don't know that. We can chase his lineage back. 
with the way that he plays, he might as well be. He's that good. So my my next pick um, for uh, for a top player, it's kind of an interesting one because his French career has been really an enigma to say the least. It's been uh, it it's been something very curious. Uh, what an awesome just the word. current Ballon d'Or winner, Kareem Benzema. Fraud. Honestly, I Alex always Mugel robbed. What? Alex Mouille robbed. Fraud. Stop mentioning Alex Mouille. I don't want to hear any more Alex Mouille. <laughs> I really have no idea. I mean, I'm sure French fans will have a better idea, but I don't know if he's actually going to play with them or not, considering the fact that he went years without getting any chances. And, and he was definitely good enough to have. Um, but, I, you know, you can't say he's not at the top of his game right now, considering he was just voted the best player in the world. Uh, at least for last season. Whether you agree with that or not, that's up to you. But uh, he certainly played well enough to play into this team. He's he's played pretty well for Madrid so far this season. 7-2-1 rating, five goals, one assist, and seven appearances. Uh, World Cup qualifying was also pretty strong. Played only five games, but three goals, one assist in those games. Uh, and in Nations League, played only three games, but got a goal in one of those three games. So could be a pretty like I I mean I think we obviously think the Ballon d'Or winner is going to be pretty influential for your team if he uh, gets the game time so he's on my list. So his six year absence, by the way, was due to a blackmailing scandal, which basically was trying to out him for doing things that um, I need to pick the right words here because. Because we we are, a, a you could just leave it at that. Just, just yeah, just leave it at that. That's that's probably that's probably that's probably fair. Yeah, but he um he had a blackmailing scandal go on over him, which put him in some pretty hot water. Deschamps left him out of the team. That was that. Um, they brought him back in in 2022. I'm sorry, in 2020 as well. I should fix that. Um. And he's been in the team ever since. So I would assume he's he's joining the team. You don't leave the Ballon d'Or winner off of your World Cup squad. If you do, you get fired. That's pretty simple. But if they do, makes my predictions a little, a little more straightforward. My last player on the list, because I also had Karim, is one Hugo Lloris. Um, there was gonna, it looked like there was going to be a goalkeeper battle for the number one kit. Uh, however, Mike Magnan in... Uh, AC Milan looks to be out through the World Cup. So I don't know anybody else going to challenge him. Um, it looks like it'll be his goal for one last tournament. He has this ability to make fantastic saves. He's got good control of his area. Um, but he's he's prone to at least one error per tournament. If you remember the 2018 World Cup, he had that uh, in the final, he had that ball that got played back to him. He took an awful first touch and they tapped it in for a goal. At that point, it was like 4-2, so that made the game pretty close. Um, this back line is decimated with injuries, uh, including the the two midfielders in front of him. Uh, so he's going to have to be relatively strong for them if they're going to move on. Yeah, that's a fair shout. Um, I had another player on my list, but to be honest, as we as I was doing some more research on him, uh, I I don't know if he's actually considered to be like a, a top player for at least the French national team, but I had Chris Vern Kunku on there. Uh, oh, I think he's a top player, he's but awesome. doesn't seem to really get in the mix much or as much as you would think for France, uh, considering that it seems like they play Griezmann probably a bit more in his position typically. But um, yeah, I think he's a really good player. I think he could be a top player if he was getting the game time, but considering he... I don't believe he had any appearances in World Cup qualifying unless I just missed it. But, you know, considering that, it's kind of hard to call him a top player for France. But I just feel like, you know, from a, at least the club perspective, I think he's a top player. Sure. Um, I do remember he had a bit of a knock. I see his injury history here. But um, my computer's lagging again. Here we go. Maybe you should fix that. I should have restarted my computer before we got on. But... Well, it's too late now. Uh, he only missed one game with a wrist injury, so uh, not necessarily too bad. But um, Yeah, I actually put him in my 11 because I think he belongs in there. He's been 
playing at a higher level than, than Griezmann the last couple of, of week or months. Uh, not in terms of like level of play, but in terms of his production. So um, I have them in a 4-2-3-1 with Yoris in the goal, Pavard, Saliba, Upamakano, and Digne in a back four. Digne. Tried to, tried to replicate the Nepenthes there. It didn't work very well. Do you even know that meme? Are you even in the loop? Nope. Ooh. Uh, I've got Chimeni and Kamavinga in the uh, the two holding mid spots, which is going to be a massive, massive focus point for them as they move forward. Because that was Pogba and uh, Kante, which were unbeatable in 2018. Uh, going forward in that three pack, I've got Coleman, Nkunku, and Mbappe. Um, Griezmann can slide in to Nkunku's spot. And then I've got Benzema up top with Ben Yedder or Mbappe kind of filling in that space. Not the not the Ben Yedder and then Mbappe. <laughs> well, I had Mbappe starting, so obviously. Obviously Mbappe starting. Well, um, he's on. Yeah. I've got it like pretty, at least shape-wise, I've got it pretty different than you have it. Uh, I went with a 3-4-1-2. And I've got Hugo, Hugo Uris in goal. A back three of Saliba, Badia Shile, and Upa Meccano. Then, I guess, like, fullback slash left-right midfielders. I've got Furlan Mendy and Ben Pavard, because you know Ben Pavard loves an absolute World Cup banger. Um, in those midfield spots, replacing Pogba and Conte, I've got Tuchuameni, uh and Kamavinga. And then the three up top, the one sitting a bit deeper, I've got either Griezmann or Nkunku. I'd go in Kunku, but it seems like they play Griezmann a bit more, so I feel like that's who they'll go with. And then up top, I've got Mbappe or Benz or Benzema, who would be my starter, um, but potentially Giroud if they decide to go with him instead. Ugh. I know, but that's who they they love Giroud. I wouldn't put it past them to start. I would go Benzema. I think Mbappe and Benzema have to be your starting strikers. So. Erlen Mendy, I don't know if he'll be there, because wasn't he a part of the... Didn't he also have something that he was accused of? I don't know. I'm almost was certain. He? There was he? One of the Mendys did. I think it might it might have been both of them. I don't know. I know Benjamin Mendy did. Yeah. You remember him? I do remember him. Um, I don't know if that's the one you were thinking of. It's, I, I do have an article here saying that. He was accused of some things. Uh, Erland Mendy? Yes. Oh, so well, I, I mean, know. if he's not there, then... I I thought Luca Digne was uh, questionable, but, you know, if, if he's healthy, then yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's just a one-for-one one replacement, honestly. It wouldn't really change my shape or anything. But the, this leads up to some questions about how is this team going to compete when most of their best players are hurt? Well, France, I feel like, has been known for their depth. Right now, is this is more of a chance than ever to prove that this team is actually deep. I still feel like, on paper, this is a really strong team, despite the fact that they are missing so many people. I mean, I had, I wrote down like a list of names. This is probably the most... I mean, we haven't gone through all the teams yet, but I would say this is highly likely the most injured team going into the tournament. Conte and Pogba are out. Um, I think Baran's doubtful, Kunde's doubtful, Wesley Fofana, Lucas Hernandez, Mike Magnan, uh, Bubakar Kamara. I mean, that's a huge list of people that are out. And I think they're like, for the most part, they're like all in defense too, which hurts. But they're still so strong in defense, even without these guys. I mean, Upa Meccano, Saliba, and and uh, Batty Ashile is, is your three center backs. If you play with a back, with a back three is certainly good enough to get out of this group um and then in the midfield to to have two young stars like like uh Chuamene and uh and Kamavinga replace Conte and Pogba is phenomenal so I think there will be growing pains I don't think France is going to go in as the favorite to win it all but this team is still super strong in my opinion that's why everybody's allowed to be entitled to an opinion even if it's wrong 
Go on. Go, go tell me how France isn't qualifying out of his group. Listen, please. Listen. Every year since 20... At least last year and the year before. I don't remember about 2010. The champion of the group came in in bad... Or uh, champion of the World Cup, excuse me. From the previous four years. Came in injured and in terrible form. And didn't clear the group that they probably should have gotten out. This team, being as beat up as it is, nearly being relegated from their group with teams that were not as good as the teams that they're playing, and bowing out of the Euros like they did, there are some questions to be asked. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You can ask questions, and... and you know, I definitely think there's some debate as to where exactly they'll finish in the group. I just, me personally, I don't think there's a debate that they don't get out of this group. But we can, we can jump in. I don't know if, if we're at that point where we're talking about that, or if that's more of a discussion for when we do full predictions. Let's do predi- let's do full predictions at the end, and we can argue. If we have All right, to. we'll we'll save that conversation for the end then. 